Apollo 7 was the first crewed flight in NASA's Apollo program, and saw the resumption of human spaceflight by the agency after the fire that killed the three Apollo 1 astronauts during a launch rehearsal test on January 27, 1967. The Apollo 7 crew was commanded by Walter M. Shearer, with Command Module Pilot Don F. Izell and Lunar Module Pilot R. Walter Cunningham. The three astronauts were originally designated for the second crewed Apollo flight, and then as backups for Apollo 1. After the Apollo 1 fire, crewed flights were suspended while the cause of the accident was investigated and improvements made to the spacecraft and safety procedures, and uncrewed test flights made. Determined to prevent a repetition of the fire, the crew spent long periods monitoring the construction of their Apollo command and service modules. Training continued over much of the 21-month pause that followed the Apollo 1 disaster. Apollo 7 was launched on October 11, 1968, from Cape Kennedy Air Force Station, Florida, and splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean 11 days later. Extensive testing of the CSM took place, and also the first live television broadcast from an American spacecraft. Despite tension between the crew and ground controllers, the mission was a complete technical success, giving NASA the confidence to send Apollo 8 into orbit around the moon two months later. In part because of these tensions, none of the crew flew in space again, though Shira had already announced he would retire from NASA after the flight. Apollo 7 fulfilled Apollo 1's mission of testing the CSM in low Earth orbit, and was a significant step towards NASA's goal of landing astronauts on the moon. Shira, one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts, graduated from the United States Naval Academy in 1945. He flew Mercury Atlas 8 in 1962, the fifth crewed flight of Project Mercury and the third to reach orbit, and in 1965 was the command pilot for Gemini 6A. He was a 45-year-old captain in the Navy at the time of Apollo 7. Izell graduated from the Naval Academy in 1952 with a BS in aeronautics. He elected to be commissioned in the Air Force, and was a 38-year-old major at the time of Apollo 7. Cunningham joined the U.S. Navy in 1951, began flight training the following year, and served in a Marine Flight Squadron from 1953 to 1956, and was a civilian, aged 36, serving in the Marine Corps Reserves with a rank of Major, at the time of Apollo 7. He received degrees in physics from UCLA, a BA in 1960 and an MA in 1961. Both Izell and Cunningham were selected as part of the third group of astronauts in 1963. Shira's crew in training for Apollo 2, 1966 Izell was originally slotted for a position on Gus Grissom's Apollo 1 crew along with Ed White, but days prior to the official announcement on March 25, 1966, Izell sustained a shoulder injury that would require surgery. Instead, Roger Chaffee was given the position and Izell was reassigned to Shira's crew. Shira, Izell, and Cunningham were first named as an Apollo crew on September 29, 1966. They were to fly a second Earth orbital test of the Apollo command module. Although delighted as a rookie to be assigned to a prime crew without having served as a backup, Cunningham was troubled by the fact that a second Earth orbital test flight, dubbed Apollo 2, seemed unnecessary if Apollo 1 was successful. He learned later that Director of Flight Crew Operations Dickie Slayton, another of the Mercury 7 who had been grounded for medical reasons and supervised the astronauts, planned, with Shira's support, to command the mission if he gained medical clearance. When this was not forthcoming, Shira remained in command of the crew, and in November 1966, Apollo 2 was cancelled and Shira's crew assigned as backup to Grissom's. On January 27, 1967, Grissom's crew was conducting a launch pad test for their planned February 21 mission, when a fire broke out in the cabin, killing all three men. A complete safety review of the Apollo program followed. Soon after the fire, Slayton asked Shira, Izell and Cunningham to fly the first mission after the pause. Apollo 7 would use the Block 2 spacecraft designed for the lunar missions, as opposed to the Block ICSM used for Apollo 1, which was intended only to be used for the early Earth orbit missions, as it lacked the capability of docking with a lunar module. The CM and astronaut spacesuits had been extensively redesigned, to reduce any chance of a repeat of the accident which killed the first crew. Shira's crew would test the life support, propulsion, guidance and control systems during this open-ended mission. The duration was limited to 11 days, reduced from the original 14-day limit for Apollo 1. The backup crew consisted of Stafford as commander, John W. Young as command module pilot, and Eugene A. Cernan as lunar module pilot. Ronald E. Evans, John L. Jack Swigert, and Edward G. Givens were assigned to the support crew for the mission. 
Givens died in a car accident on June 6, 1967, and William R. Pogue was assigned as his replacement. Evans was involved in hardware testing at Kennedy Space Center. Swigert was the launch capsule communicator and worked on the mission's operational aspects. The support crew also filled in when the primary and backup crews were unavailable. CAPCOMs, the person in mission control responsible for communicating with the spacecraft were Evans, Pogue, Stafford, Swigert, Young and Cernan. According to Cunningham, Shira originally had limited interest in making a third spaceflight, beginning to focus on his post-NASA career. Flying the first mission after the fire changed things, Wally Shira was being pictured as the man chosen to rescue the manned space program. And that was a task worthy of Wally's interest. Izell noted, coming on the heels of the fire, we knew the fate and future of the entire manned space program not to mention our own skins was riding on the success or failure of Apollo 7. Given the circumstances of the fire, the crew initially had little confidence in the staff at North American Aviation's plant at Downey, California, who built the Apollo command modules, and they were determined to follow their craft every step of the way through construction and testing. This interfered with training, but the simulators of the CM were not yet ready, and they knew it would be a long time until they launched. Simulators were constructed at Houston's Manned Spacecraft Center and at KSC in Florida. Once these were available for use, the crew had difficulty finding enough time to do everything, even with the help of the backup and support crews, the crew often worked 12 or 14 hours per day. After the CM was completed and shipped to KSC, the focus of the crew's training shifted to Florida, though they went to Houston for planning and technical meetings. Rather than return to their Houston homes for the weekend, they often had to remain at KSC in order to participate in training or spacecraft testing. According to former astronaut Tom Jones in a 2018 article, Shira, with indisputable evidence of the risks his crew would be taking, now had immense leverage with management at NASA and North American, and he used it. In conference rooms or on the spacecraft assembly line, Shira got his way. The Apollo 7 crew spent five hours in training for every hour they could expect to remain aboard if the mission went its full 11 days. They undertook launch pad evacuation training, water egress training to exit the vehicle after splashdown, and learned to use firefighting equipment. They trained on the Apollo Guidance Computer at MIT. Each crew member spent 160 hours in CM simulations, in some of which Mission Control in Houston participated live. The plugs out test the test that had killed the Apollo 1 crew was conducted with the prime crew in the spacecraft, but with the hatch open.